welcome everybody to a new Juju live session about the hips in Egyptian dance, or as many like to call it, the hips in belly dance, whatever that means. Okay, <laughs> so in this live Q&A, I am going to answer some of the most frequent, interesting and perhaps silly questions about the importance of the hips in the practice of Egyptian dance and how to improve your hips expression, your hips technique, okay? So all the questions I'm bringing are questions from dancers that have reached out to me either via email, Facebook, Instagram, questions that I've learned to love and to answer sometimes too many times throughout the years and questions that I believe are going to improve the way you dance with your hips, but mostly and most importantly, the way you treat yourself, your body, that includes your hips, okay? So before we launch, I'm gonna invite you to drop your questions. If I have time to answer, I will. If not, I will save your questions for another session. Drop your feedback in the comments below this live session. Let me know how's your relationship with your hips if you are comfortable dancing with your hips, if you feel free and creative and empowered or not, let me know what your experience has been. And of course, I am going to do the proper presentation as you do. So for the ones who don't know me yet, my name is Joana Saida. I'm here with my Sunday coffee. Thank you very much. I'm a world-renowned oriental dancer, teacher and choreographer, and I'm also the creator of the pioneering Joanna Saida's world and Joanna Saida's online dance school delivering authentic Egyptian dance, personal discovery and empowerment. Now that we got all of that protocol out of the way, we can move forward with the importance of hips in Egyptian dance. Hi, Joanna. I can see we have our first online poll online companion hi joanna good morning i'm not sure if it is good morning for you it is good morning for me it's 10 a.m here <laughs> welcome to the session and feel welcome to share questions or your experience uh working creating with your hips hi nuraya hi dear it's cool because now i can see your comments right next to me facebook well done good Okay, I'm liking this because I can deliver the live session and I can be in direct contact with you. That makes sense before I had to leave. It's 11 a.m. for Joanna. Okay, so it's, it's morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so feel welcome to share your questions, your feedback. Hi, Teresa. Bon dia. <laughs> bon dia. Hola. Tudo bem? Um, as I was saying, guys, share whatever you feel is useful in the comments and because they're just in front of me it's going to be so much easier to interact with you and to answer you okay so this is so cool i'm excited before i see your questions and before i address them let's go for the ones i have saved actually i have, I have saved so many questions they're in my notebook i don't know if i'll have time to answer everything but i'll do my best okay so the first question that I'm going to answer and excuse me because it's been a long weekend, very long, and I couldn't make it without coffee. Um, the first question is a silly one, but a very frequent one. OK, do you need wide hips for the practice of Egyptian dance? Do you need wide hips for the practice of Egyptian dance? OK, I'm going to wipe that out. Do you need wide hips? You need hips, period. So unless you are an alien or another creature that is not human, and even if you are another creature who is not human, but you have hips, you can do Egyptian dance. So I know that sometimes we are sold certain images, certain beauty standards, certain rules that, to be quite honest, are nonsensical, silly, and a waste of our energy and time. Yes, we are sold the idea there is a body type for Egyptian dance, for belly dance, right? Yes, we are sold the idea there is a, a face type or a standard beauty that fits the oriental dancer archetype. But I have news for you. There is no oriental dancer archetype. 
everybody can be an oriental dancer there is no specific body no specific hips you have hips you can move them you can express yourself you can have fun you can have pleasure that's it so stop the bullshit and stop putting people into boxes and harming people's self-esteem and confidence based on nonsensical ideas like this one okay so i'm talking about the hips because that's the question but we could expand this question to other things like do i have the the, the breasts for egyptian dance do i have the face do i have the hair do i have the body type i've listened to this question so many times and my answer is always um drop drop uh, the nonsense you know you are a person, you have a body, you can dance. Okay, that's it. Cool. I am not by any standards the typical uh, standard body or face for Egyptian dance. And I've made a career in Egypt. I've made a career around the world. And I mean, who cares? Focus on becoming the best dancer possible. And by the way, the best person possible. That's what will take you in the long haul. Okay, that's what will make you shine. That's not um, about your hips or about your hair or about your face or about your breasts. Uh, let's drop it, okay? Focusing on what really matters is a good idea. And that is becoming the best possible dancer and the best possible person, period. Okay? Anything else is fluff. Drop the fluff, okay? <laughs> okay, second question. Uh, what does Egyptian dance do to your hips? I'm not so sure in which context this question came about. Uh, what does Egyptian dance do to your hips? I believe this is a question about benefits. Very often I receive questions and I don't clarify because I'm in a hurry. I'm, you know, collecting questions and I don't have the time and the energy to ask, what do you mean <laughs> exactly? Sometimes I do, but usually I don't. So I can only suppose this question is related to the benefits so what does egyptian dance do to your hips the first thing is it creates awareness of that particular body part and this is a huge thing because most of us especially women are not aware they're not connected with their hips and with the world between their hips that's the womb incredibly important for our health for our creativity for our stamina for our life fire for our enthusiasm for our longevity it's so important and it's sad to acknowledge that most women dancers and non-dancers are totally disconnected from that body part hips and womb so the first thing that egyptian dance does to you is a reconnection with that body part okay and it is incredibly important to remember that Moving your hips is not enough to reconnect with your hips. There are other tools, other strategies that can be used to bring that person back to that body part with awareness, a deep connection, acceptance and love. Okay, so I would say that the biggest benefit, the biggest benefit of them all is the awareness, the acceptance and the love that you grow into in relation to your hips when you study egyptian dance okay the second benefit i would say is the muscular and the bone health strengthening when you move your hips correctly so i'm supposing you have the correct anatomic position the correct position in your knees i'm supposing that you're dancing in a correct way that you're being guided by a professional okay if you are then your muscles and your bones will gain strength and flexibility and then in itself that in itself it's a great benefit okay it strengthens your pelvic floor it strengthens your abdominal wall it improves your digestion it improves your uh, menstrual cycles it improves a lot of the functions of the organs that are around that area okay it also allows you to develop your sensuality and your creativity because the hips and the womb are where the first and the second chakras or centers of energy are located so one of the things that i have observed in myself and also in students that i have been guiding for a long time 
And I have students, I'm very proud to say this, I have students at Juana Seda's Online Dance School, for instance, that have been studying with me since the beginning. And, and I mean really since the beginning, for more than 20 years. And that's incredible, okay? Because I've been through so much and, and they've been through so, through so much, but we gather again and we, we, we join again to, to learn together and to grow together, to teach each other. And it's wonderful. So what I've learned from this observation is um, that through Egyptian dance, we become more aware of our creativity more aware of our sensuality and sexuality because then again we're talking about first and second chakras centers of energy more aware of our power to materialize our dreams to survive and to thrive in this earth more aware of our self-worth and so many other things that go beyond the dance practice so what does Egyptian dance do to your hips? It does a lot of good stuff to your hips and, and mostly it does a lot of good stuff, good stuff to you as a person in terms of your health, in terms of your mental sanity, in terms of your emotional sanity, in terms of your development, your longevity, your energy and even your purpose in life. Remember that we're talking about the centers of energy, first and second, that are connected with our existence on earth, on this material world, and how we deal with the material world, how we sustain ourselves, how we nurture ourselves, how we create our reality, how we survive, physically speaking, so many essential things that you put into motion and that you empower through the dance with your hips in terms of the discipline of Egyptian dance, properly taught, okay? <laughs> so these are a few benefits. There are more, by the way. Hi, Jadranka. Hi, hi, hi. Once again, guys, it is wonderful to um, receive your highs and your good mornings, but feel welcome to share your experience with your hips, okay? Even if you don't have a question, Make the best out of this live session and feel welcome to tell me what is your experience dancing with your hips? Do you like it? Do you feel empowered by it? Do you feel creative with your hips? Do you feel like you're in charge? What's happening? What is your experience? I would love to know about it. Okay, so drop a comment in the, in the comments thread. Cool? Okay, next question. Why do Oriental dancers wear a hip scarf? <laughs> this is a kind of a silly question, but it's a very frequent question and it's actually interesting. Okay, so we wear hip scarves because point one, there is a center, an energetic and physical center in Egyptian dance located in the hips and in the womb. So we want to be reminded of that at all times. Okay, it's kind of a, a symbol of a starting point. The movement spreads all over the body that means that in Egyptian dance we don't use only the hips and the womb but the movement and the energy and the emotion should come from there okay so the scarf is a symbol of that center of that starting point okay and it helps you to remain in contact with it cool it can also be um, an additional layer to the dance because many of the hip scarves that we use have coins and the sound of those coins can add a percussive element to your dance. Okay, just like Sagat. Hmm? The dancer can create an additional layer of music, of musical details with our hips if the hip scarf has coins. Cool? It is also a way of feeling beautiful, feeling proud of your hips, feeling empowered in your hips, being reminded of the symbology, the importance and the beauty of your hips, okay? So for me, these are the main reasons why I personally wear hip scarves. Of course, there is also the aesthetic question. Um, a lot of women feel more beautiful as they wear a hip scarf. They feel more sensual. They, they feel like they're beautifying themselves. And that's also a part of it, you know, because when you when you make the effort of beautifying yourself, may that be with a hip scarf or 
a beautiful dress or you know a pair of earrings any anything that makes you feel more beautiful speaks about self-worth and self-confidence and self-care and pride in who you are so it's always a good idea to go for your dance practice or for a dance performance if you also perform with a sense of pride in yourself and pride in your beauty the hip scarf can add that layer of beauty to the dancer okay um let me see if i'm escaping something because technology is foreign to me if you can you believe it it's weird people don't believe me when i say this but <laughs> okay i'm seeing everything cool i was afraid i was l escaping something letting something escape sorry guys i'm a little dyslex dyslexic today okay why are the hips such a big deal in egyptian dance why are the hips such a big deal in egyptian dance first of all i've already mentioned they are the center they are the starting point either physically or emotionally energetically or 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 the three of them okay sometimes i don't start a dance piece with my hips with my womb i start with other body part but energetically emotionally i'm starting from there from my guts it's our second heart in the womb the second heart so that second heart of the womb that world between the hips should be the starting point of every egyptian dance piece at least this is what i know and what i believe in okay so the importance of the hips in egyptian dance has to do with this starting point with this center okay either physical energetic emotional spiritually speaking okay it's also about the amount of vocabulary that we have in Egyptian dance focused on the hips. It is a fact. A lot of the dance vocabulary in the repertoire of Egyptian dance, the vocabulary we have established as standard, is located on the hips and womb. It is true. So although we're moving the entire body, there is a predominance of hips and womb movement okay and energy and emotion and intention and life it's also a question of exploring an instinctive intuitive language of the hips that is beyond the standard vocabulary that we're all taught let me explain all of us myself included are taught more or less the same egyptian dance vocabulary that includes the vocabulary located in the hips and womb okay all of us are taught basically the same vocabulary some of us more or less but the standard vocabulary is the standard vocabulary for everybody aside from the standard vocabulary there is a language of the hips that is quite obvious when you do baladi awadi for instance okay the baladi progression huh? very obvious because you are requested that self-exploration you go within your hips within your womb and you rediscover their language and it's a language that nobody has taught you and nobody can teach you as a teacher i'm always very careful and very aware of this frontier between what i can teach and what i cannot teach there are a lot of things I can teach my students and then there is a lot that I should not teach because it's not my territory so I will not invade it I will create the conditions and I will offer the tools so that my students can go for themselves into that private territory but I will not invade it it's not mine to 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 protect or to to dominate or to work with it's theirs so there is the standard hips vocabulary and then there is the intuitive instinctive personal language of your hips and womb okay and once you start to rediscover that language that instinctive language you fall in love with egyptian dance on a completely different level and you fall in love with your body and with yourself on a very animalistic and soulful manner it is gorgeous and for me that's perhaps the biggest jewel and the biggest reason why the hips are such a big deal in egyptian dance okay what else do i have here what else um do we only move the hips in egyptian dance 
aren't there any other body parts involved? I think I've already, I've already mentioned that in Egyptian dance we move everything. There is this misconception that Egyptian dance is about the, him, the, the hips and the womb, right? It is not correct. Although there is a predominance of vocabulary and the starting point in the hips and in the womb, as I've already mentioned as well, it is also true that the dance vocabulary in Egyptian dance covers from head to toe. We have loads of footwork, traveling steps, torso, chest, shoulders, arms, hands, head, face, everything you can imagine in Egyptian dance is moving. Okay. It's not only about the hips and the womb, but as I mentioned, it's coming from there. It's blooming from there. Okay. What else? Um, I've been asked about the difference between Sohaila Salimpur's hip movements and Egyptian style shimis, which are part of the standard vocabulary for hips in Egyptian dance. Now, I have a very golden rule, guys. I have a few, but one of them is I don't speak about what I do not know <laughs> and I don't speak about things I don't like or about people I don't like. Um, very often I have uh, dancers sending me emails and messages asking me, what is your opinion about this dancer? What is your opinion about that dancer? And I don't know if the intention is to catch some cat fight or create some cat fight or if they're genuinely curious about my opinion. What I do know is that I don't waste time speaking about other dancers unless I really love them. And then if I really love them, I will say so publicly. If I don't love them or if I don't know them or their work, I will not say a thing. I say none of my business, not my circus, not my monkeys. Another lifetime, perhaps. OK, so this question is an example of uh, of the kind of questions I will never answer because I'm not interested and I don't think they're going to add something to the table. OK. Um, I do know the name Sohaila Salimpur. I do not know her style, her method, her work. Um, so I wouldn't know what is the difference between Sohila Salimpur style, whatever that is, and Egyptian style shimis. Okay. Um, another question. What is the best way to avoid lower back damage when performing lower pelvic drops and when performing hip twists? Okay. So in Egyptian dance, there are a few rules that teachers should know about and should reinforce in their students. A good posture is the beginning of everything, right? Egyptian dance is beneficial if you do it correctly. If you are not having a good posture, if you are not protecting your knees, your hips, your spine if you are not warming up properly before your dance practice if you are not cooling down properly after your dance practice there are no miracles and injuries will come and pain and difficulties will come okay one of the things i've always been very careful about was precisely all of these things that i'm describing so before a class, before a private dance practice, before a show, even when I was performing every day, not every once in a while, every day, okay, in Egypt, several times per night, several times per day, you know, the most intense um, work schedule you can imagine, even in that extreme situation, I would always take care of warm up, proper warm up, proper cool down being very careful with keeping your body warm, not mixing a sweat, sweaty body with cold temperature, because that's terrible for your bones, terrible for your muscles, making sure that you take care of your body in between your dance. Okay. So this is self care for dancers, for Oriental dancers. And one day I will do a video specifically for this because I receive so many questions in relation to this and it's a subject that I am good at because I've always taken very good care of myself and of my body. I always wanted to dance for a long time 
and I wanted to have a healthy life. So I've been particularly careful on protecting my body and making sure that it is operational through and through okay so aside from a good posture a correct posture aside from keeping the right joints flexible and i'm not not gonna go into detail here because this is not a class but the ones who study with me they know what i mean um okay your spine is straight and your knees are flexible they're unlocked there is a specific posture there there are ways to protect yourself okay and overall reinforcing self-care reinforcing the conditioning of your body and the self-care routines that keep your body in shape keep your muscles and your bones in shape okay i mentioned warming up and cooling down super important but there are many more okay there are massages there are uh baths bath uh tub um rituals okay I, you can draw a bath with very hot water and epsom salt every once in a while there are so many things you can do to keep the machine working okay so this question is an interesting question because it is not only about specific joints or specific bones or or muscles it's about self-care as dancer as a dancer you have to feel that your body is your most precious tool and i know that we don't treat it like that especially when we're young we feel ah, i can do whatever i want there are no consequences but there are consequences you may not feel the consequence now years later you will believe me so it is a good idea to start taking care of the body of that machine that you depend on as early as possible that's my answer self-care and good posture and defensive posture okay posture that defends that protects your joints your bones and your muscles super important hmm? what else do we have and by the way guys i'm gonna invite you for a workshop we're hosting a workshop hips don't lie at when say it is online dance school it's gonna happen on two two sundays the 23rd and the 30th of April and in that workshop I'm gonna give you a glimpse of an incredible world the world of the hips and the technique the self-exploration creativity and how to expand your vocabulary in the hips in the womb and how to expand your mastery of your hips in a second I'm gonna tell you more about that okay now what else do we have what else um let me read the questions i've covered this ones okay uh are the hips meant to seduce i love this one of course <laughs> hi jadranka hi hmm, jadranka is sharing um a very interesting question in a second i'm gonna answer it jadranka stay put stay put okay <laughs> um are the hips meant to seduce okay this is a very old question it kind of smells like mold it's a little bit smelly because it's so old and so outdated but it's still coming back to me again and again and again you know and it's, and it's interesting are the hips, hips meant to seduce you can seduce with whatever you want however you want whenever you want what I would like us to start doing is to detach the concept of seduction from Egyptian dance, because those are very different concepts. As I usually say, there is a difference between sensuality and seduction. Egyptian dance is a sensual dance. Let's not kid ourselves, because there is nothing wrong with sensuality to start with. So there is no need to kid ourselves, right? So there is this um, idea that Egyptian dance is either proudly sensual and people feel a little bit naughty, like they're doing something wrong, or people try to clean it up. No, Egyptian dance is not sensual at all. It's a serious art form and it's very dry. And this is nonsense. There is nothing wrong about sensuality and nothing wrong about seduction either. 
but they're very different concepts. Egyptian dance, as far as I know, is sensual. And if you tell me otherwise, I don't know. Maybe you're practicing a different dance, or maybe you have a different perspective, and I respect that, okay? I do. But hear me out. Sensuality is about the pleasure in oneself. It's about my ability to feel good in my own skin. It's about my ability to take pleasure out of the movement, out of my body, out of the music, out of my breath, out of this moment, okay? It's a gift I offer myself. It's a closed circle movement. Seduction is a very different process. Seduction aims to affect a target. It's not pleasure for me. It's pleasure for somebody else that I'm trying to target and to allure in some way. Although I love seduction, and I think seduction has a place and a role and a purpose in our lives, it has nothing to do with the Egyptian dance that I know and the Egyptian dance I teach and perform. It's a very different thing, okay? Now, sensuality is something I celebrate, and it is an essential part of this dance form, okay? So the hips are not meant to seduce as much as the chest is not meant to seduce or your legs are not meant to seduce in Egyptian dance. They're meant to express. They're meant to connect. Yani, if I'm performing Egyptian dance, I'm not there to seduce. I'm there to connect with my audience. I am there to express. I am there to move my audience in some way. If I want to use my hips or any other body part to seduce, that's a different subject. It's a private subject, nothing to do with the dance itself. You know, very often I would speak about this with Mahmoud Reda, whom many of you know. He's considered the father of Egyptian folklore and the creator of the iconic Reda troupe. I was privileged to have studied and worked with him all the years I was living and performing in Egypt. So I had this double life, <laughs> performing at night and then in the mornings I will work with Mahmoud and when we started teaching together I would go out, you know, on weekends to teach with him in festivals and etc. And we had very different ideas about many things. This was one of the things I loved about our relationship is that we respected each other so much that we allowed each other to have very different um, ideas and very different perspectives. And uh, one of the points that we discussed the most and one of the points where we disagreed was the, the issue of sensuality, right? And how sensuality is a natural part of Egyptian dance and the natural part of life. Cool? So very often um, I would tell them, you know, people are crazy about, they're so afraid about seduction and they're so obsessed with seduction that they forget there is a, a simpler, more natural and impossible to escape reality in Egyptian dance, which is sensuality. And what I see nowadays is that people still freak out Egyptians and foreigners they freak out about the subject of sensuality and seduction. First of all, because they don't know the difference between the two. And second, because they feel there must be something wrong with both. <laughs> must be something wrong with sensuality and it must be something wrong with seduction. From my perspective, there is nothing wrong with either one of them. Okay, but Egyptian dance is sensual. It is not necessarily seductive unless you make it so. But you can also seduce with Argentinian tango or salsa or jazz or any other dance style. Okay. Now, before I read the last question that I have here for you, let me read what Jadranka is sharing. Okay. Um, how can we free our hips psychologically? I love this question. Uh, by that I mean not be ashamed of our bodies and our sensuality, which is something we have been taught for a long time. Yeah, Jadranka, I hadn't read your question yet. I'm reading it now. I just read the first phrase, but I kind of feel like I've answered part of it now, <laughs> you know, because one thing, there are two issues, okay, two issues in regards to the hips, especially for women, um, and two psychological issues two main psychological issues, let's call them that way. 
One is the question of sensuality and sexual energy, because when we move the hips in the womb, we are moving, we are uh, creating a dynamic movement in the first and the second chakras, okay? And the first chakra and the second chakra as well, they are connected with our sexual organs, our sexual energy, our desire, our libido, our pleasure, uh, our survival. So there is no doubt that when we move, especially in Egyptian dance, with the kind of music, the kind of movements, the kind of dynamics we have in Egyptian dance, there is no doubt that we are awakening our sexual energy. What Indian uh, gurus, Indian masters call the Kundalini, okay? The Kundalini energy. And Kundalini energy is not only sexual energy, it's life energy, okay? It's the fire in your, in your guts. It's the, the, it's the enthusiasm for life. It's the passion. It's the willingness to live. That fire is sexuality, and sexuality is a very wide reality, a very wide experience. It's not only about the sexual act, okay? So dealing with that sexual energy, with sexuality, with sensuality in the way that I've described, my ability to feel pleasure in life and my ability to believe that I deserve to feel pleasure in life shamelessly, that's part of the psychological side of the hips. And that's a big obstacle that most women and men also but mostly women will find when they study Egyptian dance they will bump into the sensual slash sexual energies that Egyptian dance awakens particularly in the movements of the hips and the womb that's one thing another thing is body love it's self-esteem in terms of your physicality a lot of women have partial self-esteem. What do I mean by this? They kind of love themselves, but only parts of it. Some women, they have self-esteem or self-confidence in their intellect. They're very confident in their intellect. They love their head. They love their mind. They love their intelligence. They're confident in the way their mind operates, but they hate their bodies they're totally disconnected from their bodies. Some women are very confident in their emotions and in their relationship with their emotions, but they are not so confident in their mind, in the way their mind operates, and they're definitely not confident with their bodies, in their bodies. Sabah al Nuri Muhammad, Isaac. Isaac. So, Psychologically, the heaps will move many skeletons out of the closet. And this is one of the reasons why it can be such a healing process. Then again, if you are being led by a teacher who knows what they're doing, right? Because if you just stand in front of a mirror copying movements, it's better than nothing. You're moving. At least you're doing something. But you're not going to experience the deep transformation that you can experience if you're being guided by someone who can take you deeper into yourself, okay? So psychologically speaking, there is more, there is more, but these two points are of incredible importance, these two blocks, these two challenges, the sensuality slash sexuality energy that we awaken and also body love how to love our physical bodies, how to make peace with our physical bodies and with all the transformations our physical bodies go through. It's so challenging for most of us. And notice that women are cyclical. We increase our weight, we go down, we go up, sometimes we are swollen, sometimes we shrink, depending on the moon, literally. We do not live in a society that allows us to change and to go older. Growing older or growing up is not a pacific theme for most of us because we live in a society that does not allow women to grow older. So, man, this is a can of worms. It's, there is so much, so much, okay? Once again, what I'm going to do is 
in our upcoming workshop, Hips Don't Lie, and I'm going to post all the information either in the comments to this live uh, session or in the description box, um, okay? I'll give you more information about that. We are going to start to tackle this fascinating world, okay? And I do hope you will join me because it can be life-changing. Thank you for this amazing question, Jadrank. I really, really love it. And I think it's it's straight to the point. Very important. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Jadranka says, please save this live. Yes, it's saved and it's going to be available in the replay format for sure. Now, the last question I have. And if you have questions, guys, please, this is the moment to share them. OK, um, what can I do to improve my hips technique? OK. What can I do to improve my hips technique, the way I dance with my hips, right? Which is very much at the core of Egyptian dance or belly dance, as people like to call it. OK, uh, there are many things you can do. And once again, this is not a class. This is a live Q&A. So I'm going to keep it simple and keep it short. OK, uh, today I'm actually going to post a video with three tips to improve your hips technique. So if you're interested, you can also check my YouTube channel, Joanna Seda's YouTube channel. I'm going to drop a link to the channel below this, this session. Um, and if you watch the replay at my YouTube channel, then you know what to search. <laughs> OK, but the first thing is to make peace with your hips and to reconnect with your hips. OK, going back to that body part, not ignoring it, not hating on it, not dismissing it, because if you memorize movements and steps, if you follow your teacher and you get the impression that you're learning how to move your hips, right? Because you're memorizing technique, but you are an enemy to your hips or your hips are your enemy. You will never have the freedom, the self-expression, the creativity and the magnetism that you could have. OK, moving from the hips and developing an interesting dance technique in that body part comes or starts with loving that body part. If I don't love it, I don't trust it. I hate on it. I criticize it. I feel bad about it. I hide it. How am, how am I going to ask my hips to do something for me or to be free and express themselves? How am I going to listen to my hips when they talk to me? And they do talk to me. They tell me what to do, how to do it. If I trust them, if I trust them, they will trust me. And there is a communication. My hips and my womb are constantly communicating with me. And I'm not only speaking about my dance. I'm speaking about every day. They make me more intuitive. They tell me when something is a yes, something is a no. They tell me when something is off with my body. I should check this. I should check that. It is like a, a guide, a radar for so many things. So when we speak about improving our dance technique in our hips, we're also speaking about improving our health, body awareness, body acceptance, body love, and overall intuition. OK, the second thing you can do is to learn the correct technique and to learn it through visualization. OK, and most of us, myself included, are taught in a very different way. We are taught through a copy mimicry. Your teacher will do a movement and you follow it. You copy it. This is not how I work. It is not how I discovered dancers learn with quality, there is another way of doing it. And that's through visualization. Then again, I'm not going to go deep into it. If you want to know more, uh, feel welcome to join our workshop. Hips don't lie because we're going to get into visualization. Um, it is important to draw the movements from within so that you can understand what you're doing as opposed to just copying and so that you can own those movements and create from there, create variations create disruption, create new standards, new shapes, new patterns, new lines, new directions, OK, new possibilities. Another thing that you can do in order to 
improve your hips technique is to um, to use music that is going to pull you from that particular body part. And this one is a little hard to explain. <laughs> Uh, it is easier to do when you are in class with me uh, because you will feel it. But there is certain music like baladi pieces, baladi awadi pieces, uh, pieces with a lot of accordion or a lot of percussion that will, will be conducive to more hips and womb movements. So if that's a part of your technique, in particular that you wish to develop choosing the right music is also important last but not least realize there is a language of your hips i've already mentioned this but it is important to repeat it okay one thing is what you learn from your teachers and that's precious that's the starting point perhaps for most of us that's the starting point another thing is what you find within the language of your hips and the language of your womb a language that nobody can teach you nobody can take away from you or give you this is another level another depth another layer of your learning process in egyptian dance that i consider revolutionary in so many ways and when I speak about self-discovery and empowerment, and now people are catching up and I see dancers promoting themselves using these terms, you know, uh, it's becoming trendy. But when I speak it, and I've been working on it for decades, more than 20 years I've been speaking about it and doing it, I'm doing it from a real place. It's not because it's trendy. It's not because suddenly everybody feels they have to do the same because it's, it's working or it's cool. For me, it's a very literal reality. It comes from my experience as a dancer first, then as a teacher, as an observer of dancers, as someone who has dealt with so many dancers from all types, all ages, all physical and artistic levels. I mean... And I can tell you right ahead that the language of your hips and the language of your womb and the reconnection with that language is one of the most important and strongest self-empowerment processes you can go through. It literally changes you and your life. Once again, I'm not saying it because it sounds good. I'm saying it because I've lived it. And because I've seen other women and men leaving it, okay? So I'm going to close this Juju Live session with this note. And as promised, I am going to invite you for our upcoming workshop. Hips don't lie, okay? So this workshop is going to happen on two sessions this April on Sundays. Uh, they are live sessions, both live sessions, but they're fully recorded, which means that you can do the live sessions with me and then do the recordings as much as you want. Or if you cannot be live with me, you can do the replays in your own time, at your own pace, okay? And uh, they will include bonuses as I always do. I always overgive <laughs> in my courses, in my workshops, in my work. There is always overgiving. This is me, I cannot avoid it. Um, when you subscribe, you get access to these two live sessions. The first one, it's about the basics of hips technique in a way that I know you have never been taught before. So be prepared to be surprised. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or an advanced level or professional teacher. There is something new and useful and groundbreaking for everybody. And the second session is exclusively dedicated to a full choreography focused on hips vocabulary and exploration so this is something i've never done before i'm very proud of it i'm very excited for it and of course i hope you will join me okay there is an early bird uh, finishing very soon i believe tomorrow uh, for our community so you can either 
join our newsletter and I'm going to drop the link below this video so that you can join the newsletter and get the information about the early bird. Um, or if you are already inside our community, check your emails because we've been sending information about this workshop and about the early bird finishing tomorrow. OK, if you are going to watch this replay after the workshop has taken place, there is no way to subscribe. So what I'm going to suggest is that you join our newsletter anyway, so that you are the first to know every time we have new courses and goodies and gifts inside our platform. And of course, you'll be the first to know once I open a new edition of the Hips Don't Lie workshop. OK, so it's a good idea either to join us now. That's the best scenario. Or if you're watching this past the date of the workshop and it's not available anymore because it will not be available at all times, it will go away very soon. OK, this is not one of those um, workshops that we keep available at our school. This one is going to go away. If you have uh, let this one escape you, then join our newsletter and uh, you will be warned every time we have a new event coming and surely you will know when we have a second edition of the workshop. OK, all the information about our newsletter and Hips Don't Lie workshop in the comments below this video, in the description box below the video, if you're watching this on YouTube or in my bio or profile, if you're watching um, on my Instagram, that's it. You'll find the links there for sure. Comments, description, description box, profile. I'm so dyslexic today. Sorry, guys, this is awkward. I'm usually so fluent, but today it's a disaster. It's OK. It's OK. We work with what we have. All right. So for now, I'm going to say bye bye. Thank you for dropping by, Teresa, Mohamed, Jadranka, Joanna, Nuraya. Thank you for dropping by live and for your input. Thank you for your time watching this session and feel welcome to share questions. If you have questions, even after the live session has taken place, OK, I will do my best to answer them sooner or later in some way, shape or form. All right. I love you. And I will see you soon. And now I'm going to enjoy my coffee under the sun because it's a beautiful sun out there. Enjoy your time. Have a beautiful Sunday and I will see you soon. Mwah.